All right. Kelpie and Ashley and Crystal. Crystal. Yeah, these Crystal are my girls right Crystal. here. Crystal on the left, Ashley on What's the right. What's happening? I'll try to remember these names. Um, so where, where are you guys all from? You're, you're from Orange uh, County? Yeah, well, I mean, we're kind of all around. Like, I'm from Southern Orange County, but I kind of bounced around Central Orange County and just, like, you know, moved around my whole life. Um, you yeah. could, you're from, she's from Seattle, but kind of, like, you know, same thing, bounced around Southern Cali. Um, yeah, and same with her, honestly. All over Cali. How'd you guys end up in this lifestyle? Um, that's actually kind of an interesting story. Like, I kind of say they found me. Like, we always used to kind of joke about it, talk about it, like, oh, we could do this to get some money and things like that. We never actually took it seriously. Um, but about two years ago, I kind of just started, you know, dipping my foot in the game, kind of like figuring out the ropes and stuff like that. And then they were kind of short for money. And I was like, you know, there's some ways we can get some bread. You guys were in the streets before this happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're actually currently, we're homeless. Yeah. So um, I kind of just told them like, yo, we can get some bread. You guys can, uh, you know, you're white girls. It's kind of a rare thing to see out on the streets. So we ended up just going for it. And Ashley and Crystal, were you, were you working as sex workers at all before the? Before we met him? Yeah. Um, no. no. I mean, I like, I tried to do some things on my own. I had a little bit, but you know, nothing. You need a pimp. Yeah. yeah. Real talk. <laughs> so tell, tell me why you need a pimp, Kelpie. Why, why well, you it's not just the security aspect and like taking care of the girls, but it's just, I found, at least with most of the females in my life, past girls I've had, these girls, something about managing money is kind of like, it's a, a thing they struggle with a lot. For sure. So I'm really, I pride myself in being like a CEO minded person. I'm really good at managing money. So I'm not taking their money per se to go spend it on random stuff for myself, but I'm helping them manage it so that we can put it into investments, things that are gonna make us more money, things that are gonna look after our health and all kinds of good stuff, not just, you know, bullshit. Yeah, and you, you guys will work where? Um, I try and keep them off the blade. Um, they have worked the blade a couple of times, but mostly I just try and post ads and that's cracking. Since they're white girls, people want them, so. So the internet is, your, is the way you guys do it? Yeah, mostly just ad work, posting ads on all types of different sites and magazines, and it's, it's working. You worry about the law? Um, I mean, like I said, I've been in some some trouble before. I actually just got raided yesterday. But um, in terms of getting caught up with the law on this, it's not a big fear for me right now, just because I kind of know the people I'm working with. Most of the tricks, I'm kind of familiar with them. You have regulars? Yeah, definitely regulars is how we make most of our money. I mean, we will branch out sometimes, but like I said, the regulars are really consistent money and pretty much like three times weekly, sometimes bi-weekly, things of that nature. And being Caucasian, you're, 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 I think you're the first white pimp I've interviewed. Yeah, honestly, a lot of people always told me like, oh, bro, you're pimping, you're pimping all this. I'm like, you know what? I wasn't really pimping before I got into this, this game. But when I actually got into the game, I just kind of like jumped off the edge and just started swimming real fast. I picked it up just like I picked up all the other uh, activities that I've kind of messed around with. I just, I learned them quick. Um, I pride myself in being a very intelligent person, pretty street smart and book smart. So I kind of use that to my abilities when it comes to this game and other ones I may have dabbled in before. And uh, drugs are part of your guys? Uh, yeah, we all, um, we're on different drugs. Um, they're using crystal meth. Uh, and that just kind of, you know, helps them keep working. But they were doing that before they started working with me. Um, before they were in my stable, they were already messing around with drugs. Um, I personally, cigarettes um, and opioids, but I really cut back on the opioids a lot. Just like, you know, coding promethazine and Percocet and stuff like that. But mostly just nicotine is my my only vice. Yeah. Try and stay pretty Is this sober. just a business arrangement or is there a romantic aspect to this? Um. I mean, I guess you could say it's a little bit of both. Like, I love both of these women. Um, I mean, we've done things of like, you know, a sexual nature and things like that. But for me, the number one thing I focus on is the money. Um, and I'm sure they'll probably tell you the same thing is they're really just trying to, you know, have a better lives for themselves. And that in this day and age really involves money. It's like the, the ticket to freedom is what I call it. Yeah. How, how old are you guys? Um, 19, they're 18. So you're all kids. Now we're young. Yeah, but we still about our shit. We still getting this money. 
like I said, feds just took $20,000 from me when they raided me yesterday. But um, we're going to make it right back, you know. Wow. And uh, actually, and Crystal, you tell me how you guys grew up and how you, where you came from before you got into this situation. Um, I kind of grew up in the Valley, like Moreno Valley, and my dad lived in L.A. My parents weren't together. My dad, an addict, um, wasn't there a lot. Haven't seen him in many, many years. Um, grew up in a horror house, things like that. So, a horror house or a horror house? Horror house, yeah. Horror house. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the independent mom, thing your, your is. Your mom was a hoarder. Of, no, my grandma. Oh, your grandma. Yeah, we live with my grandma. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, and um, yeah, then. Made our way around California. Um, my mom found another guy and grew up in a pretty nice area, but um, I always felt like there was something missing or like was in LA. Like I like kind of got attached to that place and like I still view that as like my home. Um, and so it's a nice city. Yeah. It's a show, a nice city. Not really living the, like, um, <sighs> the, like, privileged life. Uh, that white more, picket fence life yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not it's for sure. It's my style. Mm. So. That's how I grew up. I grew up white picket fence style. Um, until I was, like, I maybe 12 or 13, and um, my parents divorced. Kind of screwed all that up. We moved um, more down south, Orange County, um, and then after that, I struggled with drugs and stuff. So I was in and out of rehab for a long time. Um, and then my parents, uh, they sent me to like an Amish type of like community. a cult, huh? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they they were trying to control you or just yeah. set you on the right right path? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, I was just, they um, put me in rehab for smoking weed or um, running away. They're like, they, uh, so they're, they're very strict. Very. And you were rebellious. I didn't like to be t told no. I'd say so then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's something we all kind of got in common is that like rebellious streak. We've all kind of strayed away from society's norms in terms of not just drugs, but just the way we think. We all kind of have that different mentality from go get a nine to five, you know, hustle every day in a legal way to get a minimum wage and all that. We kind of we saw more for ourselves because we knew we're special people. And so that's the reason we kind of dabbled in this. And once we started doing it, we realized like, yo, this works for us. So we're sticking with it and just trying to go up from here, you know. Ashley and Crystal, you would say this arrangement works for you guys? Yeah. It, yes, it's the best possible situation. It, like we all met each other at the perfect time. Yeah. You guys have been together how long? Um, I don't want to say exact specifics just because of the shit going on right now, but it's been months, yeah. um, close to a year. And we've been friends even before that, probably like three years now. So it's not the typical abusive pimp? No, nah, definitely not. You know what? With girls that I've had in the past, um, if they get a little bit of a really strong-minded uh, rebellion, then I have I have checked a girl or two in my past, but kind of learned from that. You know, the gorilla pimp and style just doesn't work. Um, I'd much rather, you know, just get them to do what I want with my mouth rather than you know slapping them around and shit like that. Because at the end of the day, that's not good for nobody. They're not gonna want to go work if I'm beating on them. They're not gonna look good if I'm beating on them, giving them black eyes and things like that. So. Yeah, I just kind of tell them like, yo, this is what I expect from you guys. This is what I want from you guys. A lot of times they go above and beyond. You know, if they're not doing exactly what I want, you know, I'll kind of give them some motivation to do it. And yeah, that's that's my main job other than managing the money and keeping them safe is to just be that motivator in their life that they both need, that we all need, honestly. So your, your role is like their manager, you're their security guard, you're their... Everything like that, yeah. I mean... There's been times when we've had tricks that are, you know, most of them are unpredictable, but some that kind of just freak me out a little bit. And I think it makes them have a little bit more peace of mind when I'm there, you know, you know, just 
in a defensive way, kind of able to intervene if anything bad were to happen. Have you guys had incidents yet? Um, we've had a few people try and short us on money, but we always made sure we got that right back. And, um, you know, we've had people intentionally like, you know, try and stay longer above their time limit of the date and things like that. But we kind of just shut that shit down and, you know, get them out of that situation and usually move on from that trick and just find a new one. So a couple of your style seems to be a little bit of a throwback to like the 80s, I'm 100% 90s pimps. old school in every way, 70s. in the way I think, the way I dress, the music I listen to. Because the old school is the best school. Like, you can ask anybody around here and they'll probably tell you like, oh, the old school, you know, they were doing this wrong and this wrong. Old school works. This new bullshit going around of people, you know, beating on their girls because they think that's old school and, you know, just putting them out there, busting cheap dates, all that type of shit, it don't work. Like, it might work for you, but it's not gonna work in terms of the relationship with the girls. That's why you see them constantly switching hoes back and forth, because the girls aren't gonna wanna be out there not feeling loved, you know, just having to do this every single minute of every day. You know, you gotta leave time for relaxation, leave time for fun, and most definitely gotta stay fly. Um, are there tennis shoe pimps down in Orange County? Oh, uh, you know what? Honestly, in Orange County, I've, I've met a few pimps and they're all just gangbangers. Right. They don't even, like, you could call them tennis shoe pimps for sure, but they're mostly just, um, you know, Chicanos, uh, Cholo gangbangers, and they just find a, you know, they realize prostitution is a way to make money, so they kind of get into it, it and shit like that. Yeah, but it ain't, it ain't a real pimp in my opinion. Right. A real pimp's got to have love for his girls. He's got to have respect for his girls. He's got to earn it and demand it but he's gonna get it either way. And it's gotta be a good mix of both. You can't just be beating on your girls, demanding respect, cause that ain't respect at the end of the day, that's fake. And so I'm just really big. My whole life thing is keep it real, you know? I don't like none of the fake shoes, fake jewelry, fake clothes that all these people be wearing out there, especially the pimps, cause they're just basically spitting in the face of the culture and in the face of the game. And yeah, it just gives a bad name to all the other pimps out there, including myself. A lot of people like, you know, Homies I've had and shit like that, maybe not current homies, they're kind of like, oh, bro, you're, you're a terrible person for doing all this. I'm like, bro, you don't know the half of it. Like, I'm not saying these girls wouldn't be where they are today without me, but I'm saying that I wouldn't be where I am today without them. And I think vice versa, honestly, too. Um, and that's because I keep it old school, because I keep it the way that it should be played. This game is not something that changes as the times go on. Seems to be what people think, but is something that needs to stay traditional because that's the way it's always worked. It's the world's oldest profession and it needs to be played by those same rules that it was created with. And, and you'll make sure the girls get what they need in terms mm -hmm. of drugs and- 100%, food. as much as I don't like them doing the drugs, I'd much rather go buy them a nice meal than I would drugs, but they need the drugs to stay normal and to work. So yeah, I make sure that they're getting safe drug supply and, you know, all the paraphernalia they need to consume those drugs. Is it difficult with the two different personalities? Um, you know what? They're, they're pretty close friends. So a lot of times they have qualities about them that will be difficult for me to manage, but I'm a people person. So I can honestly handle that pretty well, you know, kind of please both of them, including myself. And it works out, you know, we don't have any issues with that more than normal. You're still a young man. Did you have any idea that one day at 19 you'd become a pimp? Um, I'm not going to say I knew that I was going to be a pimp, but I had definitely like a personality where, like I said, I'm a people person. So I was kind of always having girlfriends when I was younger. And even if it wasn't in a romantic aspect, like I just felt more comfortable throughout my entire life with females than with males. So I guess you could say that it was an idea in the back of my head. Not a for sure thing, but definitely there. Would you describe yourselves as hustlers? Oh yeah, we are the number one hustlers in Orange County for sure. I mean, pimping is my number one hustle for sure, but in the past I've had other hustles um, and I've always been doing better than my peers. Like I said, I'm making sure they're living the lives they wanna live and just free of anybody telling us what to do, free of any roadblocks for the most part. So yeah, we're definitely the biggest hustlers out there. How about emotionally for the girls? Are they, do they get depressed or angry, anxious, anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, when you're dealing with anybody who's addicted to substances, myself included, if I'm not having my drug that day, and same with them, if they're not having their drug that day, there's gonna be a little bit of attitude, a little bit of emotion involved. But I try and just bring them up, you know? Like, they're both beautiful young women. I try and just 
reinforce that they need to love themselves just as much as other people around them love them. And for the most part, it works. I mean, we all got our mental issues that we struggle with, whether it's, you know, actual mental illnesses or chemical imbalances or whatever bullshit you want to say, but we're just people, you know, we got those types of those types of problems, but we make do with it and we work it out. What are your relationships like with your families? Um, well, I'm gonna let them tell their own stories because I try not to, I don't like to talk bad about their families and both of their families oftentimes piss me off. But as far as my family goes, um, I had a, a decent upbringing. Uh, my family was kind of like, like hers, very strict, very controlling. Um, and my dad kind of just allowed himself to get bitched around by my mom a lot. And they were always fighting and, you know, beating on me and shit like that. So I'm not going to say it was the greatest upbringing, but I always had a roof over my head and food on my plate. Um, and now my relationship with my family, they know what I'm doing, but I think they probably just don't really, they try and look the other way about it. You know, like when the cops came and served that search warrant the other day, they were, they were on my ass about it, but I kind of like, you know, calmed them down cooled him about it and told him like, yo, this is what's going on. Like, I'm sorry I didn't come out and tell you guys straightforward. I kind of was under the assumption that they knew. And Ashley, how about your uh, your family? You, you still speak to them? Um, not really at the moment. Or I'm trying to distance myself from them. Um, they, My parents never did anything to harm me physically or anything like that. But mentally and emotionally, um, they weren't really there. Obviously, my dad um, haven't seen him since I was really little. So um, we've only had a little bit of communication for a couple of years. And we're both kind of ghosters, I would say. Hard for us to like keep that communication flowing. Um, so it's not really bothersome to me anymore as much like it was. But... Uh, yeah, I always felt kind of like I was trapped. Um, yeah, no, I feel that Living for sure. with them, yeah, or with my mom, per se. Um, and my stepdad, I'm not fond of him, really, at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I always wanted to leave ever since I was really, really little. My mom would always complain because... I'd be the only kid that would cry to get picked up from school because I didn't want to go home. Um, yeah, so we got in a last final argument out of all the millions and millions of arguments that we've had that go nowhere because there's that emotional disconnect where she just can't understand anything that I'm trying to tell her. So. Um, she kind of gave me the go ahead and I, um, packed my stuff and I hopped out the window that night and I left. They give you an inch, you take a mile for sure. I mean, it's much better, I think, to be out on our own because like we are young, but we're adults and just living with our families, especially the types of families we had, it was so controlling. And so it was just preventing us from doing anything that we need to progress in our lives. So I think us finding each other through fate or through God or whatever you want to, you know, say how we found each other. It was a beneficial thing. We're all friends. We're close. We love each other. And we're kind of just able to, you know, progress together rather than just before it was kind of me progressing alone and, you know, having girls and dropping them for new ones and things like that. But when we found the two, when I found the two of them and they found me, um, we really just grew and we made a real connection that I've never had before with other girls. What would you wish your families would have done differently? Um, for me personally, I don't wish they would have done anything different. I think the way that they raised me, built me into the person I am today, it definitely built my character, gave me a good mind, and kind of just look at the world a different way. So I wouldn't say nothing. I think what they did, even though it was harsh and you know abusive, I wouldn't change it for the world. Crystal, what would, what would you say? About, about your family? Are you still in contact with them? Um, a little bit. Uh, they don't really like to talk to me. Um, so it's usually like they won't, won't speak to me for a few months and I'll try and reach out um, through multiple phones because they block every number that I text them. Um, 
but I'm not really sure. Our relationship, me with my parents, is always on and off. It's um, like it'll be really bad for a few months, and then it'll be okay, and then it'll be really bad, and then it'll be okay. What do you, what do you wish they had done differently? I I wish that they just spoke to me when I was when I was growing up with them. Uh, it's kind of they would see me struggling, and uh, they didn't want to deal with it themselves, so they would put me in like a place where um, I could get professional help, I guess. Rehabs and stuff, right? Yeah, I just wish they would yeah, have talked to me and work. tried to. Just be there, honestly, yeah. I guess if, yeah, if I had one thing about my family, I'm sure we all kind of wish that our family would had just been there more, the three of us, because at the end of the day, if you don't have somebody to count on, you're gonna go look for that type of love somewhere else. And I think that's what we ended up, you know, finding, not necessarily looking for it, but just kind of finding with each other is that love that we never really had from our families. And that connection, that bond is, it's something real, you know? Just because we're not blood related doesn't mean that we don't have that, that same care and passion for each other that our families should have had for us. What would you guys say is the most important lesson you've learned in your lives? Um, in your 19, 18 years? Honestly, most important lesson I've learned in my life, um, it's not advice that I'm going to take myself, never have, never will, but really just focus on the things that society tells you to do in terms of jobs and careers, because you don't want to be, you know, walking outside to have a smoke and, you know, getting put in cuffs, cops drawing guns on you, undercover agents and shit, and then running in your house, trashing your place, just looking for shit, you know, looking for taking all your property, you don't want that. So I would say, you know, stay in school. Definitely just, even if your family doesn't love you, love them, you know, and that goes for anybody. If they don't love you, try and love them because you can't fight hate with hate. You can only fight hate with love. And just being real to yourself, being true to yourself is the number one thing in the world. So just follow all those rules and you should have a pretty decent life, no matter what your upbringing is. All right. Ashley, Crystal, and Kelpie, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Yeah, thank you for having us. Wish you guys the best of luck. Be careful out there. Most definitely, most definitely. Stay out of jail. I'm gonna try my best. No promises, but I'm gonna try my best. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.